Well, it was they who uh, said that they will not take bail. And I said, if you don't take bail, you'll go to jail. And not only you'll have to take bail, but you'll have to give a surety and you'll have to give a bond. They, they said they'll do none of that. It'll do on personal exemption. They didn't get personal exemption. They had to pay 50,000 as, uh, as a bond. And then they had to have a surety. So Mrs. Sonia Gandhi got uh, A.K. Anthony and Rahul Gandhi got uh, Priyanka Gandhi and other people got, so they had them all uh, there. So what was all this drama about that we won't do, we will go, we'll go to jail, we'll stay. So it was a great victory on that front yeah. that we made these people stand in court like anybody else and, uh, uh, you know, uh, be equal before the law. And then the question came up of exemption, they didn't get exemption. Then I said that they may disappear uh, without notice. So uh, Sibyl said, no, no, there, there will be never uh, adjournment that we'll, we'll seek. They, everything will be orderly. So I said, okay. We, uh, then the judge also said, well, I don't assume that people who have occupied such high offices would disappear. So I said, uh, well, well let's, uh, let's look at for the next hearing. Maybe if they turn up, then that's fine. Otherwise, I'll again move the petition that their passport should be deposited. Yes. Abhishek so I think I was very satisfied. Abhishek Singhvi says that they never asked for exemption from the next hearing because I put your comment to him and he said, we never asked for exemption, we are happy to appear in court in February. They, they, uh, Abhishek Singhvi can say any lie, you see. The fact of the matter is that Mr. Sibyl said before me orally and the uh, judge said, no, no, they, they must appear in the next one. So he said, okay, then we'll file an exemption application in the next one. Now, Dr. Swami, the Congress has all day been saying that the fact that you've been given a government bungalow, a Lutyan's bungalow as they're calling it, <laughs> is, 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 is your reward. I'm quoting Congress leaders, is your reward for your services in this case. How do you see this charge and the, you know, they're saying the Z plus security, the government bungalow, this is all for services rendered in the National Herald case. Well, first of all, Z security I got when Narsimha Rao was the uh, Prime Minister and it continued through and then uh, I think when the UPA came to power they restricted the Z security to Tamil Nadu and to uh, the southern states. Then when our government came they they said this is wrong, it can't be restricted, it's an all India threat so they restored what Mr. Narsimha Rao had given to me in 1993. Oh. And then by then of course I had left government housing and I had come to my private accommodation in Nizamuddin. And the CRP said in Delhi we can't give you coverage because we don't know where to stay. Your house is too small. So then uh, the, it is CRP which first suggested that I be given a government uh, bungalow. They asked me. I said yes. I would. Uh, they said there is a rent that you will have to pay. I said I will pay the rent if that is the, uh, the condition of the CRP. There has got nothing to do with National Herald. They are uh, uh, unnecessarily doing this. This is like that the enforcement directorate. He, uh, he registered a case and then closed the case and then they removed the thing. That's a total lie. That lie go on. I think they have learned it from the fascists. After all, uh, you know what connections they have with the fascists. Uh, and therefore, uh, uh, they go on repeating these lies. You ask them to produce that this was a decision but taken only after the uh, High Court order. But, but Dr. Swami, you know, Dr. Swami they, say, they, say, they say that you wrote two letters uh, to the Prime Minister talking about your dissatisfaction with the then ED Director Mr. Katoch and his approach to the Enforcement Directorate case and they say that you are on record right. saying that after that the Director was changed. We had him changed. So they yes, are saying I agree. that. I agree. You stand by that comment. Firstly, do you stand by the comment that Mr. Katoch was removed? I stand by the comment. Yes. Listen, first of all, you please listen. I said that he never registered a case. There was a question of closing it in the rice. I was objecting the fact that the man had two jobs. I said he is hardly in the enforcement directorate. Okay. And that he, in fact, is an appointee of the previous government. Now he's got a promotion as secretary of a heavy industry. You must have a full time uh, uh, AD director. Okay. And that's a very reasonable uh, demand and yet we've got four extensions. Now, is, it, is the Congress fair in surmising that it was your letters pointing these things out 
that had Mr. Katoch actually then moved out from this additional role because the way the Congress is seeing it, they're saying because he thought there was no merit in the National Herald case, Dr. Swami wrote to the PM, the PM acted on Dr. Swami's letter and Did he register a case? Did he register a case? No. He never registered a no, case? No, he did not. Therefore, what is the meaning? I, I wanted a full-time director. Yes. So that was the reason. If he, if he had agreed to give up his secretary heavy industries and said, no, I'll full-time do this, that would have been a different matter. So you're saying your complaint was not that he found no, uh, he did not act on the National Herald case. Your problem was that he was not full-time. Absolutely. There was no case registered. Where is the question of my saying that he closed it? No, but maybe he didn't. He wasn't proactive enough for your satisfaction. Well, that that is a question of proactive and so on. Then the main point I had said, I never thought very highly of him. That is a fact. Oh. But I do know this much that you can't have two jobs, particularly if you are an inefficient person. So when you heard the Gandhis today speak about the Prime Minister personally, you know, being behind the levelling of these charges and then talking about the letters that you've been writing to him, how do you see the government's approach? The government right now has said this is Dr. Swami's case, not ours. We didn't put a government lawyer there. Correct. It's Subramanian Swami's case. That's but correct. but they also the Congress is That's pointing correct. to this communication between you and the Prime Minister and they're saying none of this could have happened without the Prime Minister being on board. Listen, I I belong to the BJP. And the Prime Minister is someone I campaigned for becoming Prime Minister. We know each other from 1972. If I see something wrong, I will write him a letter. But I never asked him that he should uh, prosecute the, the National Herald. I asked him to produce a single letter where I said that please prosecute National Herald. Give me the documents. Yes, I have filed complaints. If they don't proceed on that, I will certainly raise it. I filed a complaint with Mr. Jetley on the income tax. Mr. Jetley then had the matter uh, registered. The Congress has de uh, withheld this fact from the courts. They learned it the hard way. What fact? What fact has been withheld? The fact that there is an in ongoing income tax investigation into the, into the Congress party giving loans to uh, 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 associated journals. And that was pointed out by you. I certainly gave a complaint. And that's why the Congress says that the government does have a role in this and it's all based on Dr. Swami's complaints to the government. If I, if I, if I bring to the knowledge of any authority that a crime has been committed, it is a job to investigate. That's how the whole uh, PIL question, what happened in, in, uh, in, in 2G, I wrote to the Prime Minister, Mr. Manmohan Singh, he did nothing, I wrote him five letters. He did nothing. So I went to the court and saying he's not acting. And then the court decided to take it up. That is how we do it. All right. Last question to you. What do you see happening next in this case? We now know that the Congress is going to approach the Supreme Court against the reference to criminality in the High Court verdict. <laughs> uh, what do you see happening next? And you know, how far are you going to, uh, to take this? Uh, what do you make of the Congress's kind of political walk through the courts today? There was obviously a kind of optics at play uh, as well today. Congress has very poor legal advisors. They don't know when to cut their losses. They shouldn't have ever gone to the High Court. They should have fought it here. Now the High Court has gone into the weight of the evidence and said there is a, a prima facie case made out. It has weakened them. They can't oppose the High Court order anymore in the Supreme Court. The Supreme Court will say, two courts have found prima facie case. Why are you coming to us? Go and face the trial. Now they are going on this thing that this will prejudice them. Uh, they let them try. They'll learn the hard way. They'll only delay the process a bit. That's all. All right, Dr. Swami, it's been an eventful day for you as well. Thank you so much for joining us live here on the Buck Stops here. Thanks very much. We'll be taking a quick break. You heard from all sides of the National Herald debate on this program today. But it brings us to the close of the program. We'll say goodbye to you. The news continues on the other side.